So I want to look at a different version of hexuroline, strictly from the standpoint of factor prices. Now, if you recall, hexuroline assumes identical technologies, identical uh, tastes, differing relative factor endowments, and those differing relative factor endowments are going to give you a prediction about the direction of trade. In particular, the hexuroline result says that given the assumptions, a country will have a comparative advantage in the good that uses its relatively abundant factor intensively. We're going to be assuming that country A is capital abundant, country B is labor abundant, X is the capital intensive good, Y is the labor intensive good. So we're going to do, redo this hexuroline framework from the standpoint of the wage rental ratio, the, uh, the input costs, and the factor prices. So in autarky, the labor abundant country, country B, is going to have relatively low wage rental ratio. Wage is relatively cheap, capital is expensive in the labor abundant country. In country A, it's just the reverse. Scarce labor means expensive labor. Abundant capital means cheap capital. So here are these input costs, and then we have associated with that relative prices of the final goods. So in autarky, the cheap labor is going to make, and expensive capital, is going to make X relatively expensive, in other words, Y relatively cheap. The expensive labor and cheap capital in the other country is going to make X, the capital intensive good, cheap. So again, that intuition. Cheap inputs of a particular type means cheap outputs that intensively use that cheap input. X is going to be cheap in country A, the capital abundant country. The capital intensive good is going to be expensive in the labor abundant country. And there are reasons to trade with each other. And so we've talked about this a number of times, but let me focus again on how the coming together of the prices in trade is going to affect the wage rental ratio within this hexuroline framework. So again, the prices are going to come together because they're starting to trade with each other. The price of X is going to go down in country B. The price of Y goes up. So in country B, that's a, that is a signal to produce less of the capital intensive good and more of the labor intensive good. So in the country that's exporting the labor intensive product, they start to move resources around. They start to produce more of the labor intensive good, less of the capital intensive good. And that's going to change the demand for the factors. In particular, the, the decrease in the relative price of X it's going to give us a wage rental ratio in the, with trade that's going to be higher than the wage rental <coughs> ratio in B in autarky. What's happening is that the demand in the economy for labor is going to go up because of the increase of the production of the labor intensive good, bidding up the wage. The importation of the capital intensive good is going to reduce the demand, the economy-wide demand for capital, which is going to decrease the rental rate. So in country B, the wage is getting bid up and the payments to capital go down, making the, the ratio go up. So the wage rental ratio is going to tend to rise in the labor abundant country as they open up to trade. Exactly the opposite is going to occur in the capital abundant country. 
for them, the price of X goes up, send the signal to produce more of their good of comparative advantage, more of the capital intensive good, putting increased demand on capital within the country, importing the labor intensive good reduces the demand for labor, causing the wage rental ratio in A to fall. For them, okay, this was B, for the other country A, the wage tends to be bent down, the cost of capital tends to go up, reducing the wage rental ratio. So this depiction of hectroline is not so much about the consumption possibilities, the PPF, instead it's looking at the, the factor market implications of hectroline. The differences in the factor endowments cause differences in the original autarky wage rental ratios. The integration of the economy through trade tends to change the, the wage and the rental rate in the countries as the, as the country starts to react to the price signals from the international market. Now, one final thing to note about this is that these changes in the wage rental ratio is another way of saying that the distribution of who gets the income is changing in these two countries. In country B, the payments to labor are rising relative to capital, so there's a, a skewing of the, of the income distribution there. Labor is getting a, a bigger share. Hectoraline predicts, on the other hand, that in the capital abundant country, that labor will see a smaller share of national income and capital re will uh, see an increase in their share of income, which has significant social implications because you're talking about changing who gets what in the economy as a consequence of international trade.